I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Be water, my friend. Graham, great to have you on the show. Yeah, it's fantastic to be here. It's been an awesome couple of days with you and I'm very uh, excited about this. Yeah, I learned so much. We've spent the whole week together. And at first I wasn't really sure what to expect. And you guys came in, you and your whole team from Dirty Habits. And you pretty much showed us what water sport can feel like, what can it be like. And I was highly impressed because then I learned so much about you, about your work, what you do. And uh, just for the audience, you're an entrepreneur and an athlete, but if someone now asks you, hey, uh, Graham, what do you do for a living? What, what do you say? Uh, have, a, have a lot of fun from, from what it looks like from the outside. Um, yeah, I do dabble in many different things, but I uh, just try to uh, inspire people to live their best lives. And uh, this is pretty much the motto also that you have for Dirty Habits, which is to inspire people to live their best life. And that goes very much along with what I have in mind for flow grade, because flow is the optimal state of consciousness. And we were talking about it uh, when you did your stuns, when you were up in the air and you told me it feels so much like flow. Um, like what is your relationship with that state of flow? Because I, I know you use that term, but um, how would you describe it in your own words? Well, I've had a very interesting relationship with it because I know a lot about it. I know a lot of athletes that have tapped into it. Um, my good friend, Jesse Richmond, who surfs uh, 30 foot jaws and kites, so he's uh, very into it. So I see it a lot around uh, my friends and uh, other athletes really interested and intrigued in about it intrigued about it but don't yet uh haven't learned exactly how to how to activate it but have experienced it um naturally by myself just by not even knowing so very intrigued to like uh try grasp how to how to get into it more and how to actually like tap it and yeah for me for example uh when you when you say live your best life for me that entails like living a lot in flow or like experiencing these flow moments where I forget myself, where I immerse myself in these uh, activities, whatever I do, and, and, and don't think about tomorrow or how I look like or uh, what my sorrows are maybe. And uh, like, what does this best life look like for you? Like if you, you would describe a perfect day for me where you say this was actually exactly what I want, how would that look like? Well, it's definitely changed over the last few years. I mean, how I thought uh, what we were influencing people to what their best lives are very different to, uh, two years ago to what it is now. And what you just described now is obviously the holy grail, being able to to live that best life. Um, so it is it is very interesting. And um, yeah, let me get my head around it a little bit. So yeah, we, we basically trying to figure out that there's so much more to life than just having a good time and just having the good moments. You've got to learn to ride the bad moments as well as the good ones. You've got to learn to not just worry about uh, your physical health and being an elite athlete, but also taking care of your mind, realizing that your mind's as powerful as your body. And if you don't harness that in the correct way, you can't really achieve what you really want to achieve. Yeah, I was very impressed because in preparation also for the interview, but also during the week, I got to know you more and your work. And I actually have to admit, I Googled you a little bit and I found some great articles. You're a talented writer as well. And uh, it looks from the outside and you described that very well from uh, the point of view of someone behind the camera. Because it looks like when you check out the Instagram and definitely check out Graham's Instagram and Dirty Habits Instagram because it's fantastic footage, very inspiring. But sometimes it looks like, wow, it's so, it comes so easy to you. Like you're a good looking dude, you're successful, you have your own company, you're a talented athlete, you have great friends, but then behind the scenes, there's much more. And that's actually exactly um, what intrigued me so much and why I wanted you to have on, on the show so much, because that's something that really is also part of my mission to talk more about mental health and that sometimes things that seem a certain way are not necessarily how they are. And I want to touch on, on one experience that you actually uh, explained in one of the articles. And maybe you want to take me back there when you had a panic attack on the water. Um, can you tell me that story again? Like, because it, it seemed to me like it was a breaking point where a lot of things have changed for you after that. Yeah, well, as you said that, I just got cold shivers throughout my whole body, just uh, just just uh, reattaching it, uh, to that moment. And was one of the scariest moments of all the stunts I've done, all the 
crazy winds and big waves I've been in. Like that was the most scary moment I've ever been in my life and realizing that your mind controls everything. And when that's gone, you have nothing like, and that, that was, yeah, so very scary moment for me. Um, a lot of denial, a lot of months leading up to it, seeing the signs, seeing it was coming, not paying attention to it or actually like acknowledging what was happening. Um, thinking that kite surfing, which is my happy place, the place I go to, to feel free, to get in the flow, that everything's fine when I'm on the water and just using that as my escape, which it is, and it is, a, there's power, power in that, but realizing when things get to a certain stage, like you, you and you, you have to listen to your body, you have to listen to your mind. And I wasn't, and I was uh, kiting with my friends, normal downwind, uh, got on the, the water to try and get free my mind of a lot of the stress I was under and thinking that it would just solve the problem. And um, it just all just turned off, like just got, a, uh, got tunnel vision, heart started beating uh, faster, um, felt like I was having a mini heart attack, like couldn't, it felt like someone had taken their, their fist and shoved it down my throat and I just couldn't even get air into my lungs. And at that moment, I just like, everything felt like my whole world was, was caving. My happy place had now become a place where I couldn't actually escape my problems anymore. Like I had to deal with something and then burst into tears um, had to try get to the beach still. Um, so yeah, a couple of different things happened. But after that moment, it was quite a defining moment, realizing that I can no longer escape this. Like this is something that I have to deal with and my sport or escaping is not going to solve the problem. And that began a, a very interesting journey for me after that. Yeah, and the journey is what will interest not only me, but also many of our listeners, because I think many who find also in our field, in the field of biohacking or flow hacking or flow grading, uh, are people who deal with their own issues and they look for alternative ways of how to overcome them and also live the life that they actually want to live. And you've tried out a lot of things and actually it made me almost smile when I read what you've tried out because there's so many overlapping methods. Uh, for example, ice bathing, you talk about meditation. Um, we talked a lot about Wim Hof now before. Um, is there something specific that you would say, wow, this this worked primarily well for me? Well, as, I, I, um, as, as we've been speaking about, there's so many different ways and so many different methods and different gurus. And I spent a lot of time researching and educating myself, trying different things. A lot of them are very hard to maintain and keep a routine of doing them. They seem to work, but to like in, implement in your in your life, carrying on is 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 the tricky part for me. Having a routine, being dedicated to uh, to something. So um, I'd say like out of all things I've tried, the thing that's kind of been the most stable for me is having some sort of routine in the morning. Just having a good morning routine. It changes from 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 a day to day. Sometimes it involves a, a morning swim in the in the icy sea. The water is cold in Cape Town. It's like eight degrees sometimes in the summertime. Um, we love that. Yeah. So uh, submerging myself in, in water, getting outside, uh, writing and in, in, I've started journaling, writing stuff down. Um, and I don't do all these religious like every day I do it. But when I go through stages, I feel like a good morning routine that really sets me up and sets my mind for, for a good day. And then I, I play around it exactly what those things are. But I also find particularly interesting because you're an athlete, you're a creative person, you're an entrepreneur. And now it seems like there are more and more people coming out also in the world of sports, uh, people in the NBA. I'm a basketball player, so uh, Kevin Love, uh, DeMar DeRozan, many other players who say they deal with mental problems. And do you, do you think, well, let me ask another question, like how do you think it came that way? Was it that these people were not coming out before because it, there's a sort of a label of shame to it or is it because really with everything going on with the world going a bit crazy with instagram with everything that it's overwhelming now for especially people who are exposed to all of those things i definitely think it's the stigma around mental health especially amongst males um we tend to be very macho um you don't really you ask someone how they're doing are you doing good are you having a bad day you're having a shitty day but then life carries on so um i think the stigma around it is is, is really bad and that's really what my mission is uh, well leading forward i'd like to go more and more into it get more athletes to talk about it because it is so inspiring when someone like like kevin love opens up about that kind of stuff and you see the response he gets from people that all the comments on youtube under his videos i feel the same thank you like this has changed my life um men can talk about this stuff so to have predominant figures and i'm not saying it's me but i'm hoping that i could dirty habits and myself can be a platform for guys who are in the public eye who have this instagram following and everyone thinks i have the perfect lives to get them to talk about it a bit more because it's such a big thing and i think the whole pandemic thing has definitely brought it to light 
So it's not like it didn't exist before, but now people are spending more time with themselves in their own head, isolated a bit more. They're realizing all these things and now it's coming a big way where people are actually approaching it and attacking it. And it's gonna be a very exciting few years, exciting, but it's gonna be an interesting few years to see how this develops and people start coming out a bit more about it. We're gonna definitely also link to the article you recorded a video. By the way, I found it very authentic and charismatic because you actually had the camera rolling while you restart doing the video over and over again. And you could see as a, uh, as, as a spectator how uncomfortable it first was to get started. And then the camera went off for 30 minutes and <laughs> you had to redo it probably again, which was uncomfortable. And uh, just want to compliment you for that, for, for putting that out. Because oftentimes I think that me, if I was born later and, and grew, grown up now in, in this age, of Instagram as an athlete, because back in the day I was, you pr probably do the, doing the same thing with kiting uh, on the water. I was practicing and you couldn't compare yourself. And a young person now, an athlete, can go on Instagram and all of a sudden you see people your own age, they do crazy tricks and they have already sponsors when they're like 15 and they are uh, super good. And I think that that puts a lot of pressure on especially young people. And that's why I consider it to be very valuable, people coming out and actually talking about that stuff. Uh, do you see it? The same way yeah definitely i think like uh the young must be terrible being the younger generation now and and coming into the social media world where it's so about your how many followers you have um what your photos look like selecting the best photos from the day um just putting your best life out there the whole time um and you really if you want to get a good sponsor if you want if you're in business and you want to get a good partner or an investor like you just have to seem so professional so organized so to so like Uh, on it all the time so we really have set the standard that you have to have your shit together you have to look happy you have to sell the best life the perfect life so it's really hard for someone to like go oh, i'm, I'm going to try and achieve all these things but i also want to talk about my mental health because it makes them look weak it shows vulnerability in a negative way uh, perception of of, uh, of less negative so i think it's really tricky to navigate it and um If it's done in the right way and doesn't always have to be super deep, doesn't always have to be like really heavy stuff, but just small conversations, showing some of your life that isn't exactly perfect and got filters on it, uh, just being a bit more real and stuff. I think it can inspire a younger generation to realize that like they need to they need to approach this stuff. Also, you just touched on environment, which I think is, is highly important and you need obviously people around you that support that. and. Uh, in the article also you touched that your relationship helped you quite a bit um how so um i think people underestimate the value of of good friendships good relationships good people in your life to making sure you have people around you who who to who care for you as much as you care for them and um having those people around you can not only be a life-saving moment like my fiance candace was there in the darkest times it wasn't for her She really helped me get through some really important uh, steps in my life and and not just those moments, but just growing as a person. So you want to have people, you want to surround yourself by people who lift you up, people who inspire you, people who are there with the good times, but for the bad times also, because it's so easy to get stuck in a rut or a group of, of friends that affect you negatively, who want to stay late at the bar or want to drink a bit more or want to don't mind being hung over on a, a Saturday. Like it's very easy to fall into a, bad trend a bad path and you have to be very aware of it and surrounding yourself by people who can who can point those things out and keep you accountable and also be there for you when you when you need them that's probably the most undervalued thing in the world i can imagine is just not having that not having people like that in your life must just be be very hard so yeah it's definitely important do you, do you have like a method where you um i guess it, it is especially difficult for someone like you who is in the public eye and you get approached a lot and people want something from you um do you have t uh, s techniques or skills that you learn to yeah to say no in a way or to to follow your path and not get distracted i actually don't i mean that's what that's one of the things that like um kills a lot of my, my energy is just being being open to everyone all the time wanting to help people wanting to create the fun the the fun vibe um being the fun guy um just being i'm a real like i like being around people it's 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 uh, it's that's who i am and sometimes you realize that you can't maintain that all the time so i haven't found the tools yet to actually realize only realize afterwards that i've done it but i'm 
have learned recently, one of the things I've learned the most is, um, is boundaries, setting up boundaries between in relationships, even with family members, with partners. Um, boundaries are just really important because if you don't have them, then you end up exactly what you just said now is it's just giving too much of yourself and then not having enough energy for yourself. And then that's often, often when like a, when a depressive cycle can kick in or you can get stuck in a rut. So um, yeah, boundaries are super important to me at the moment, which I'm still learning about. Let's do a little experiment. Like if you were uh, your own best friend right now and you would observe yourself in a situation like that where you might get stuck again talking to people you actually don't want to talk to, not leaving early enough, uh, what would you give, what advice would you give yourself as your best friend maybe? Oh, it's a good, good question. <laughs> I'm, I'm great at giving advice to other people but not taking my own advice very well. Um, but I, I think it's important to just say like, like take some me times, like, save some energy for yourself um take moments for yourself not everything has to be shared with everyone not every moment has to be published on instagram not every uh, relationship has to be spoken about like some things are just good for yourself and good for the soul um and i have learned uh, lately to start taking some solo trips usually i go on a, a road trip with a car uh, as many guys and boards we can fit in the car we fill that car up and go and just like a couple of months ago was the first time i ever did a road trip by myself um, about six months ago was the first time I ever carted by myself, which is like as a as something I do all the time every day. And then every time I kite, I'm with like five to ten people. It's chaos. It's fun. It's exciting. But when I went for a session by myself, it was completely different. I was in a different state of mind. So um, I think people un uh, undervalue spending time with yourself, learning from yourself. And uh, yeah, so I definitely think that's an important thing that I need to do more of. Okay, let's take that question uh, to another person. Let's say there's a, a young aspiring entrepreneur looks at you and uh, as an idol, wants to get there, wants to have his own company and create the skill set, but is sort of stuck in these episodic depressions and gets down on himself. Where would you recommend this person, boy or girl, could start to to look better? What would be a first step? Well, I mean, obviously the the obvious one is is speak to someone talk to someone go to see a therapist i've uh, spent many time many hours with with therapists um but also just learn about yourself educate yourself on what it is that you think um the problem is or or seeing what traits you have that affect you negatively um and being aware of those things is the first step to being able to overcome them because if you aren't aware of like why are you behaving in a certain way or why are you so nice to everyone all the time or why you uh, do whatever you you just stay in that loop the whole time so you need to almost like step back take a outside perspective of it look what you want see where your passions are see where your flaws are um and then spend more time on getting your increasing your flaws and um yeah i would say no, it's a good step, I think, because it, it doesn't help. Oftentimes, it's the obvious thing that you need to be reminded of a couple of times just to open it up or talk to someone. And uh, what I think is a good development today is that it's more and more acceptable to actually open up and, and talk about, hey, I'm having not a good time. Like, what can I do? And I had my challenge as an athlete. I told you about that. And I went to see a professional psychiatrist over the years and I still do because I think it's really helpful and I actually would probably recommend it even to to everyone because um, there are always things that inhibit you that block you external factors that distract you from where you want to be to live the best life that you want um, so I think you can't really go wrong in doing self-development now when you look from last year until now uh, like when you look at that whole progression that you've done, like how do you feel right now in comparison to, to one year ago? Well, I'd say um, maybe it's more of like a, a three-year process that as I, I look at it in a very short term, but when you said it, I realized it actually was, um, it's been been about three years of this whole journey. Um, and I'm just, yeah, completely, very different person, very um, like I'm not, haven't solved everything, but I definitely feel like I'm more focused on what are the important things. I found out what are the important things and now I'm working towards them. So it feels like I actually have a goal. I have a semi roadmap in front of me, although I'm not achieving all those things that I want to yet. I'm working towards that and having a goal, having a purpose, it definitely helps my life being a bit more stable, a bit more 
thinking things through a little bit further. Like if I do this, what is the outcome? Whereas before I was just very reactive, reacting to every situation and not actually taking a step back and going, okay, let me think about this first. Um, that's been very important for me. So yeah, definitely on hundred times better than I was a couple of years ago. So feeling in a really good place and super inspired and motivated and finding my passions and stuff. So I have my down days, um, as we all do. Um, it's not always, you're not always on, it's very hard to stay focused and, and all those things all the time. But when I am, I like, to, I can get back on track quicker than I could before recognize a pattern and make a change. Thank you for sharing all of this, by the way. And uh, I want to touch also a little bit about your entrepreneurial career, because that's also something I think that's very inspiring, especially for young people following their dream, because you pretty much opened up a whole new industry for people. Because when you entered the kitesurfing business or the, the kitesurfing sport, let's say, it really wasn't a big thing like it is today. Uh, because I think you mentioned that you opened even the first kite school in Cape Town. Is that right? Um, it wasn't, I mean, there were, we, it was so far, uh, far ago that there weren't very like established things. People were still learning how to kite. So it wasn't like there were schools set up to, to do this kind of thing. So I was there in the beginning when people were, a lot of the guys who kite in Cape Town and the locals um, taught them how to kite. And that whole process of, of getting people into the sports and that was, was really interesting. So yeah, definitely been here from the beginning in Cape Town. It's been great to see the process and how the industry has grown and, and the people who have, who have come into it, having guys like you, like we wouldn't have met if it wasn't for kiting. So um, it's definitely made some for amazing relationships and yeah, I love yeah. it. Because of you, I'm definitely going to go further in the sport as well because it's super inspiring. It's really a flow sport. It puts you into flow quickly. Uh, at the same time, the learning curve is really steep, I think. Do you remember when the first moment was when you got in touch with kiting when you when you kind of got the fever? Yeah, well, um, it's actually funny. Um, I lived lived in Johannesburg, which is a, a city, a landlocked city, six hours from the near, nearest beach. Um, and I learned to kite from my dad who lived in Dubai. So I would go on holidays once a year and go visit him in Dubai and he'll teach me how to kite. And I remember those moments so, so vividly of like the first time you rode your first 100 meters, the first jump. And that whole, actually, like when I see someone like you in your stage, it makes me quite envious in a way that you get to experience all that progression every time you have a session, which is amazing. That's like one of that's the whole thing about flow is, is well, what I've learned, learned from you is um, uh, like when you out of your comfort zone, when you're learning and when you get to a certain level, like I am with kiting, it's hard to 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 be out of your comfort zone because it's you're so used to it. So I am very, uh, I'm very happy for you that you got all that journey ahead of you and having those moments of learning and progression um, and stoke that you get from doing the various sports. There's actually a happiness study that came out this year where people had uh, to bet on cars racing against each other. And uh, one car was going faster than the other. So that was winning. And at the first, there was sort of a 50-50 chance and they were just betting. And uh, in the end, they could figure out which car was faster and then they learned and they noticed that the reward didn't really matter what they won by betting on the right car. But the process of becoming better, like understanding which car gets better, that was sort of the reward in terms of happiness. And what the study proved was that um, it's not necessarily the ability that you have or the skill that you have or the money that you have or the house or whatever uh, that makes you happy, but it's the process of growth And it was the first time that they could really separate the amount of the award, that the, 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 the reward is not really that important, but the process of growth is much more important. And that touches a little bit on that. But that means you yeah, constantly need to challenge yourself as well, especially when you're on a high level and it's sort of you, you touched a certain ceiling that you find something else. But what I've seen yesterday as, as well, uh, you, you do still go over the limit, right? I mean, what could be next challenges for you where you experience this process of learning? Well, I think it's um, what you say is, is, is perfectly makes sense. And also like the unknown is also like quite an important thing to me is not knowing what the outcome is going to be. So I try to put myself in those situations every now and again where I'm at a different spot or I'm at a, uh, a different beach or a different location, like traveling to a different country can almost re-spark that, that feeling again because the conditions are different, the wind's different, um, everything's a little bit different. So um, I do that also by trying different sports. Like at the moment, I'm learning to foil um, in waves like prone foiling behind a jet ski 
Um, and I felt like that's re-sparked that whole thing again because I'm such a beginner and now I'm like at where you are with, with karting and each session I have some feeling at it again. So with karting, I haven't, after these talks you know, I, 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 you know, I've been having, I'm very interested to see where it goes and try implement some of those techniques of finding flow by like hacking them in a certain way. I've just been trying to do them by trying new sports because I haven't been able to achieve that with karting. Otherwise, like you saw yesterday, with doing a little stunt that's a little bit dangerous, has a little risk. Like we did a toe up to about what, 20, 30 meters with a kayak behind the wakeboard boats. Absolutely impressive. And um, when I landed uh, and everything worked out fine, like just felt that my adrenaline was going. I was in the flow state. You could see I was such a different person afterwards, so excited because that there was something just that the element of risk. So keep chasing those things, but also put more realistic goals on the side that I can achieve it on a regular basis without having to risk my life or safety to achieve those things. Okay, and if you guys now want to see some of this footage, you find that actually on on the show notes on flowgrid.de slash dirty habits, very simple, flowgrid.de slash dirty habits, Graham's company, and also follow your Instagram at uh, dirty habits and TV and at Graham House. And this is all linked also in the show notes as well. And um, still, because I just mentioned dirty habits a couple of times, and I'm sure you told that story already a hundred times, but uh, why did you choose that name? Um, it was actually just a little joke between a couple of mates. Um, spent a lot, yeah. I mean, there isn't really a, a, a starting point of how Dirty ever started. It just came from being surrounded by a group of guys who were just super passionate about things. Um, and somehow between our chats, the name come about. There wasn't exact. I can't even picture it. The face was drawn on a piece of paper like most of the things and uh, when I wanted to start a business uh, actually looked at through all my notes and, and found all these things that I'd been thinking about for a while and that name just worked so stuck around. So now and I'm asking a lot of these kind of questions what you would advise someone younger because I think you are someone that really people aspire to be and wow he's doing this these cool stunts and and having these cool videos on Instagram and, and photos and so on and he's an entrepreneur but someone starting out um, his or her own business and uh, the lessons you've learned from starting out until now like what would you recommend someone who says oh, I'm not sure if I should go and follow my idea start something like what would be something that that person could do in order to take take also the first step well this is advice I give to people I don't know if you might not agree with this advice it's, it is a little little different some people like to go all in on everything but the thing that's worked for me and the reason why dirty habits is is, is alive 10 years later as a passion of mine um, and a reason why i can live this lifestyle and not have to worry that when i expire as an athlete or my knees give up on me that that's over and i have dirty habits the reason i managed to get it here and keep it there is because i never went all in in the beginning i kept it it was a side a side passion so i kept doing my normal job i kept working the the normal hustle um i used to rent accommodation and cars to professional kiteboarders do photo shoots for people um did a lot of different things and then it slowly built it on on the side whereas a lot of people like they're working a corporate job and they want to quit it and chase their dream but they do that they try it for a year or two run out of money and end up back at their corporate job again so i think if you can be smart about it um and start your passion, find something you're passionate about that you don't mind working till three in the morning on because you're passionate about it. And you don't mind when you're tired from your normal office job that you can put the hours into it. Find something you're really passionate about and then the work's really easy. S start building on the side and work towards your, your goal. And at some point, you'll be able to put your other job aside and, and then go all in. And that, that's what works work for me. And I think, um, yeah. That's Do you remember that point where you made the decision then to leave your previous life behind you and then focus completely on, on dirty habits? Um, well, no, there hasn't really been a point because I still, I, I still, uh, I, I still have my side hustle on, on the ah, side. Okay. I still, I still get excited for other projects. Like I'm always like, okay, I'm going to go all into dirty habits. Don't do anything else that, that, um, derails my plan. But then I hear something exciting or I think of a, a idea like, Uh, something comes up and then I start working on that thing on the side or join someone else's business and like assist with um, uh, consulting on stuff. I just, I'm always, my mind's all over the place. So it works for me because I get to keep other, other ideas and make other things that keep on happening. So I don't know if I'll ever put that side hustle away because it is a big part of who I am. Um, but just learning to manage that time a bit better and put the hours I need into to make dirty habits 
a bit of profit so we can continue to do these stunts and continue to have the athletes on board that do all these crazy stunts. And um, yeah, so I'm always balancing that thin line of, of, of what I'm doing, but it seems to be working. Yeah, it definitely seems to be working. And also you seem to be uh, very, or I, I know you're very creative. You have ideas and you share them with the group and you, you play around with uh, lots of ideas. But from an uh, operational business perspective, is there one skill that you consider to be very important that you kind of learned over the years? Something that every entrepreneur should, should learn? I think organization is probably the most important one because it's the skill I lack the most. Um, having a schedule, uh, completing tasks, not just having a whole bunch of open-ended tasks running the whole time. That's, that's my uh, weakness is working on too many different projects at once. So I think if you can, if you can focus on something and find the tools that you can really like hone down on. You can be a lot more successful, a lot quicker. I've maybe slowed down the process because I haven't been able to, to focus on things. So I think organization and finding a way that you can be very productive, whatever that, however that productivity comes to you, when you find that, stick to that because then you can make uh, great things happen. Otherwise, they always end up on as ideas and on pieces of paper. All right. Well, thank you. I have a couple more questions for you, uh, which sort of go in different directions. There are some rapid fire, some just a bit personal to make you think. Um, I start with what is one habit or behavior that you've acquired, let's say in the last year, that made your life a lot better? Swimming in the sea. Like so many times it's just going, it's we do kite sessions and you think you're getting your, your active uh, dose of it. But I try now, if I'm available in the morning, go for a, a swim in the ocean or a pool or a cold shower. Just like setting your, just having a little reset in the morning. Um, even if I'm feeling tired in the afternoon, going for a swim or having a cold shower, it's almost as powerful as an afternoon nap sometimes. So um, I think, uh, yeah, th that's, that's super powerful for me. All right. What is one device or anything that you spent money on that you acquired that significantly improved your life a cell phone case <laughs> for a change <laughs> no um i would say i mean i'm not much of a, of a reader i haven't read read many books um when you i think i've only completed i've got add uh, struggles like even finishing a page but um i got that matthew mcconaughey's book uh, green lights And that I found that that's really been um, changing of perception uh, for me, reading the challenges he went through as a child, the, ex the hardships, his, the struggles, um, his family dynamic, um, and seeing how he takes those moments and uses them as fuel, as power, how he changes the perception, taking, for instance, that like when someone's uh, bad to you or um, uh, what's the word? Um, lost my train of thoughts yeah but when when someone behaves in a certain way to you that that's not sometimes it's done out of act of love and they do they don't know how to do it the way his parents were towards him it was was out of love but it affected him in a different way but realizing that that's why people do things realizing that sometimes people are are behaving out of past traumas themselves and they haven't been healed healed and uh just taking situations and trying to realize why they happen and finding the best out outcome from that and then using that to grow and move forward as opposed to making it a problem in your life or letting it affect you in a negative way. So I would say that that book definitely, uh, I got some really good points out of it. All right, Matthew McConaughey, uh, speaking of Hollywood stars, uh, wh who was your uh, childhood idol or idols? Um, I, I mean, doesn't have to be a Hollywood star. A Hollywood star. <laughs> no, an athlete. Um, I, I, I mean, all like surfers, uh, led Hamilton surfing those big waves. I mean, I remember when I was, when I was in school, just watching videos of those massive waves at, at Jaws being surfed before anyone else. And just thinking like one day I would love to be able to do, uh, do things like that. Uh, people have really pushed the limits in that kind of stuff. Ruben Lenton, who is like the, uh, the founder of extreme kiting, um, who's now one of my, my uh, best friends. I, when I was living in Johannesburg playing rugby, I used to watch his videos, never cutting before and being like, one day I want to do this. And then to be in a competition riding against him in a heat. Um, those were some really important things of, of my life. So. so a follow up question. Who would you like to change shoes with for one day if you could? Wow. Um, I'm not too good at on the spot spot this, this <laughs> <way>. <laughs> take your I'll, time I'll, I'll, I'll come back to it i'll come back to it 
All right. Um, now I'm stalling. <laughs> no, there's one question I just had on my mind. Uh, ah, yeah, because you told me that you're actually scared of heights and you're also scared of sharks. And But you're a kite surfer and you're high up in the air oftentimes. Uh, like you said, 20, 30 meters or Neckar Island, like hundreds of meters, hundreds of meters, and then in shark infested waters at times. Um, what kind of role does like facing these fears and overcoming these fears mean to you? Is that a, like a flow trigger? Yeah, I mean, we we're speaking about it uh, yesterday and it's amazing. I put myself in these situations that make me feel very uncomfortable and, and very scared, but I know the outcome is not... It's only how you perceive it. So I push myself to, I mean, I learned to paraglide recently, which goes against everything about heights. Like you're running off a mountain and the first week, sweaty hands, shaking knees. But when you land on the ground, that, that feeling of overcoming your fears um, is just such a powerful feeling and such an amazing place to be. So I really do put myself in the deep end sometimes because I like the outcome. Um, it doesn't make it pleasant. Even yesterday, jumping off that, that, uh, that little rock, um, I have to like get in my, in my mind and try to overcome these things. So I think having fears is amazing because it puts things in, into perspective, but also it gets you a really nice outcome when you do uh, overcome them. And can you, because I thought it was very uh, cool to see you after that stunt, well, the jumping and also the, the kiting. And you told me, I'm still in flow. Like this is the, like the afterflow effect, I always call it. But when you go back to this moment now, um, and try to one more time describe to me how that feels like when you are in this bliss, in this moment of total satisfaction, flow, whatever you call it. Yeah, I mean, as I said, I've never put uh, a word to it until we've been having these conversations. I know of flow, but I have just experienced them in, 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 uh, in moments in, in my life. And that is just one of the most unique feelings. Like you're hyper focused. Um, your your energy levels are so high. Like you feel like you could. Your confidence is up. You feel like you can do more. You can achieve more. You can go further. Like I could have done that again straight away, gone higher. Um, so I think just if you if you could harness that in in a way, which is what I'm learning is possible by by biohacking and stuff. I'd love to be able to find other ways of doing it because. It's such a rare thing. And when you get it, it just feels so, so powerful. So I'm looking forward to, to finding that with you in the future. For sure. I think that there's really a connection here. You see it, guys. I mean, we really follow a very similar idea of living. And I think that connects us. And I hope there will be many experiences in the future. A couple more questions, then I release you. Uh, one thing I just thought of, uh, which is something that you think an experience that you have made that you think everyone should make? And uh, don't say sex. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think as you go, uh, going back, overcoming a fear, depending, it doesn't matter what that fear is. I, I find it very frustrating sometimes when people have an irrational fear and they're not willing to put themselves out to, to, to do it. Like someone's afraid of, of spiders or bugs. Maybe like they don't have a phobia about it, but they're like, oh no, they don't want to touch that. But I've, like, I'll, I'll persistently try to go like just let the bug walk on your hand like I, I hate the feeling of bugs on my hands and stuff like that but sometimes I'll do it or like eating food you don't want to eat or doing stuff that's out of your comfort zone like if you can push up just be open to that like open to experiences open to feel what it feels like to overcome a fear or something that makes you feel uncomfortable because only once you can like overcome those can you really experience like true freedom um, and I think like, yeah, that's super important to me. All right. We're up to the last question. And then uh, you have the chance to tell my audience, our audience, what they can do to help you in Dirty Habits. Uh, but my last question is if you could put up a billboard in Cape Town and it would say like one phrase or a couple of words that everyone going to Cape Town, leaving Cape Town would read, what could it say? Seek what sets your soul on fire and regret nothing. Um, it's, it's something like, I'm a very passionate person. I get, I'm passionate about a lot of things. Um, and if I, if I, some, I see it in some people who lack passion, I uh, almost feel sorry for them in a way because I feel like passion is such a driving force. It's such a, there's so much sat satisfaction that comes from pursuing your passion. So many people who have passions but don't pursue, pursue them. And I think if you can really just 
make the decisions, make the changes, cut out the bullshit in your life that is stopping you from making those changes. Cut out the nights of drinking with the boys, cut out the stuff that's bullshit and find your passion and go after it. Like that's just, that, that's probably the best advice I could give to anyone. And then regret nothing is I think that um, like so many things happen in life that are in, affect our lives like so much, but you shouldn't ever regret anything. Like everything happens for a reason. Every moment that's everything that's happened to you, what, whatever someone's done to you, whatever you've done to someone else, like don't obviously if, if it's in your control, like deal with it. Um, but take everything as a lesson and learn from it because failure is so important. Like you have to fail to, to grow. So I think just, uh, don't regret anything. Uh, we all make bad choices, but you can always make up for it. What a wonderful message to end this episode. Graham, thank you very much for spending the time for talking to me about these important topics. And now when listeners now say they want to check out, you already mentioned you have an Instagram several, but can in your words again, tell them where can, they can find out more about you and your company and how they can help. Well, I mean, we don't, it's not that we want help from anyone. It's that the fact that what you guys can do is like growing up as a kid, I was never part of a tribe. I felt like that was never part of like, I missed that, I missed that out. I was in a school of rugby players, gym, gym jocks, um, never, never, never fit into anything and really felt like a loner and an outsider. And I think that's been the driving force of why I started Dirty Habits so that like you can really join a tribe that, that you fit in and we've, we're full of so many different people. Some people I haven't even met, but they bought a Dirty Abbots t-shirt and they've been in an airport and seen someone else with a Dirty Abbots t-shirt and connected in Bali and ended up spending a week together becoming best friends. Like it's definitely a way of life. It's a tribe and you feel that the people who are out in our circle like you are now and that they're all good people and you just give everyone the chance and not everyone's going to fit into, into every tribe. So I'm, I'm hoping that this is a tribe that people can help feel like they belong to, to something. And I'm just hoping that this community grows and that you guys can join us on the, on this, this road and uh, become a really strong community of people who, who, uh, who really care about living. Very cool. Make sure to follow this man on Instagram, on, uh, YouTube, on your website. Do you have a, do you have a yeah, newsletter? Website. Dirtyhabits.com. Yeah. And uh, thank you for listening. And Graham, you have the last word. Thank you so much, Max. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you. It's been a pleasure having these long conversations. Are really valuable. I really value the, um, these conversations we've had. I think having these um, these conversations are really important. Sitting around the pool, over a beer, on the beach, wherever it is. Um, take that step to get to know someone be open to people and thanks for being open to me and uh, having these conversations. So uh, I'll, I'll take this all the way back with me and have some, some good memories of this trip. Thank you, Graham. Thank you so much. Ah, bring it in. <laughs> and thanks again to the Never Stop crew for bringing us together as well. And Jonathan, go for flow.